My name is Stephen Merkley. I'm a graduate student in aerospace engineering at Utah State University. I work on small-scale hybrid rockets. In this video, I'd like to show you the work that I do as a test engineer. Hybrid rockets use a solid propellant and a fluid oxidizer. We use 3D printed ABS plastic as a fuel. ABS stands for acrylonitrile butadiene styrene. It's a plastic commonly used in sewage piping, automotive components, and some toys. For example, Lego bricks are made of ABS plastic. I have some fuel grains printing right now. Let's go have a look. Here are some fuel grains printing. It's a Fortis 250. It's printing the fuel grains at a density of about 1,000 kilograms per meters cube. That's about as dense as water. If you look closely, you can see it printing layer by layer. That's why they call it additive manufacturing. Here's the finished product. We have a fuel grain and the circular slots you see on the top, we fit electrodes through that. What fills in the channel are these little printed slots. The ignition for these fuel grains is really interesting. I'll take a moment to briefly explain it. Additively printed ABS provides local surface features, a very small radius. When a voltage is applied across the two electrodes, these surfaces concentrate charge at many discrete points on the material surface. The result is a high voltage arc that breaks down some of the ABS plastic into gaseous hydrocarbons. This makes excellent fuel in the presence of a concentrated oxidizer. After I solder some wires into these electrodes and get them installed, I'll show the suite of motor sizes that we've tested. Here are the different motor sizes that we perform tests on. These are all the fuel grains and these are the respective motor cases from 98 millimeter diameter all the way down to 24. What I'm going to show you guys today is a test on one of these 38 millimeter motors and the assembly of one of these is very simple. Let me demonstrate. You have a fuel grain right here and an injector cap. You install the electrodes into the injector cap. Next we have a liner. This is Garolite. It serves as an insulator between the fuel grain and the motor case. You slip this over the motor case like so. The nozzle. Screw that in. And lastly, you have this small guy, a swage lock to NPT adapter. This is for a pressure transducer to get chamber pressure measurements. And now you have a small thruster ready to fire. Here's the thruster on one of our demonstration test stands. This is a project that I was highly involved in. And I'll quickly go through its components. We have the oxidizer, built-in regulator, solenoid valve, and then the plumbing lines up to the injector. Here we have a pressure transducer, and the last sensor is a load cell. On this side here we have electronics. We have power supply, we have data acquisition system, and the high voltage amplifier. Now, to fire this rocket, all we need to do is send a digital out command to initiate the high voltage spark. That will ignite the fuel, and then we send another command to a relay to open the valve. And now, depending on the duration that you open the valve, that's how long the burn will last. And as soon as you shut it off, combustion is terminated because the presence of a concentrated oxidizer is no longer there. So now we have multiple restart capability, which is really cool on a hybrid rocket. I will show you that right now. Um, I'll do a one second burn with a one second pause, followed by two half second burns with half second pauses. Let's do this. All right, here we go. I'm going to arm the system. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> 